Good morning, good morning, good morning, Revelation Nation. I want y'all to stand up on your feet. I want y'all to begin to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. To everyone that is streaming, happy Father's Day. Even to everybody that's in this building, happy Father's Day. Whoever your father is, who your fifth father figure is, we celebrate you today. We celebrate Papa Lo, and we celebrate the King of Kings, King Jesus, the one that always leads me, who's always with us, who never fails us. Come on and open up your mouth and begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus because he is here. He's your father. He's a good father. He's a faithful father. He loves you with all his being. There's a reason to celebrate this morning because Jesus is here. He's a living God. He's a living Father. And if you have never experienced him, you're going to experience him today. I want y'all to begin and open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and begin to praise God. God, we give you praise. God, we give you glory. You are great, Jesus. You are great, Lord. You are mighty, God. celebrate King Jesus. Hey, I want y'all to clap your hands. Come on.
turn to them and say happy Father's Day. Isn't it Father's Day every day in church? Every time we come here we're celebrating our Father. Hallelujah! All right, sing this out with me. I know you guys know this. Consistent through the 
a God that never changes. Your circumstances don't change him. Your circumstances do not change him. He is almighty, all powerful, all capable, and he loves you. What he would do for you, that he loves you. Don't forget that he sent Jesus for you. He didn't send Jesus to forget about you. He didn't send Jesus to forsake you. Now it's a good day because a lot of darkness tends to lift in this place. A lot of darkness tends to lift in this place, amen? I've seen a lot of breakthrough in this room. In fact, I experienced a breakthrough in 2019 and I never left. I've seen people receive the babies they've been waiting for. Make some noise if you're receiving your baby. I've seen people experience financial breakthrough standing in the same seats that you're standing in. I've seen people get calls from long lost family members that they haven't heard from in years. Right where you're standing, right in these seats, is no different today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And you know that our Father's gonna show off for Father's Day, amen? He's gonna show off for Father's Day. Hallelujah, there's nothing like a father's love.
you're good. Hold lightly underneath. You are good. Anxiety is breaking off of someone in this room right now. Anxiety is breaking off of you in the name of Jesus. Anxiety, leave in the name of Jesus. Anxiety is breaking off of you right now. Lust, lust is losing its power over you right now in the name of Jesus. Lust is leaving you in the name of Jesus. I got not the Lord Jesus is moving in this room right now. He is setting people free right now. He is setting people free right now. Your freedom is in this room right now. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Jesus in this place. If he's been good in your life, let me hear your praise. I said, if he's been good in your life, let me hear you give him a shout of praise. Lord, you are good and you are worthy. How can we not worship you, Jesus, if you have been so good? have seen the goodness of the Lord in our lives. We have seen the goodness of the Lord, His faithfulness. And we praise Him. We praise Him. We join with creation to praise Him. The Word of God says if there is breath, if there is breath, then He is worthy to be praised. If we are alive today standing on this ground, that we must give him praise. Above anyone else, he is the good father, the great father, the one who loves us to the point of sending his only son so that we today may be called sons and daughters, co-heirs with Jesus. There is no greater news than that, that he is our father. Oh, we worship you, Father. We pray. Jesus, we thank you for the promise. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like our God. There's no one higher, no one greater, no one compares to you, Jesus. You are lifted high, glorified. We worship you. Come on, I can't be the only one worshiping. Let me hear you worship the Lord. Come on. We worship you, Jesus. We lift up our song. We lift up our voice. We sing to you. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. Because mm -hmm. all of creation Singing the song of oldest age, echoing heaven. And we join the angels as they sing. Mm -hmm. We join the angels as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord our God. And word, word, Jesus Christ, the saving one. Praise his name forever and ever. Oh. 
and all hail the King of glory, cause forever he shall reign. He came and redeemed all storms, and now everything has changed. All hail the King of glory, Jesus is his name. Who is, who is this King of glory?
understand who he is that we understand that we don't need to fight for his love he loves us that's a fact that's a truth we don't earn his love his love was already there when we were still sinners he already gave himself for us nothing we can do can separate us from his love we need to understand it is who he is we don't need to plead and beg god please heal me he is a healer he already wants to heal you we simply need to understand he is perfect in all his ways we can trust in our good father how many praise god that he is a good father if we give good things to our children being evil men how much more our father who is in heaven Oh, God wants to pour out. God wants to bless. But we need to understand who we are. Our identity is such a big part of the equation. When you know who you are and you know who he is, oh, it changes everything. We praise you, Jesus. We glorify your name. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Father is the one who turns graves into gardens. How many say amen? The one who gives beauty for our ashes. Only he could have. Only he can. Only he is able. Come on, how many worship this living God? We can't worship him in silence. Where there is worship, there is noise. Where there is worship, there is shouts. Come on, if he's been good, if you got legs to jump, if you got hands to raise, if you got a voice to sing, oh, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Revelation Church knows how to worship. How many say amen?
what you say is what you is what you say is what you say I won't hear other voices I listen to what you say what you say and if you say I'm blessed I know I am what you say what you say God I'm listening to every single promise that you what you say what you say so if you say I'm healed I know that what you say what you say God I am resting in your promise I know what, what you, you say what you say I know I am set free in it. What you say? What you say? So if you call me your child, I know it. What you say? What you say? And if you say it, I believe it. What, what, you, you, what, what you, you say? What you say? Come on. What has he said in your life? Just what know it. What you say? What you say? The world will try to say many lies, but we need a lie on it. What you say? What you say? In the middle of the storm, we can trust in Him. In what, what you say, what you say. Even if the doctors say there's no solution, what you say, what you say. Tell the poor, I am rich. It is what He said. What you say, what you say. Tell the weak, I am strong. Yeah. what you say, is what you say. Tell the lost, they can. I will rest in your promise. 
Come on, we can dance in the Lord because there is rest. Because he has turned our sorrow into dancing.
stand on anything that you have said cannot be shaken cannot be changed father you sent your son on this father's day we talk about how you sent your son to die for all of these children Thank you, Lord. You love your children. He loves every single person in here. Anybody that came in thinking maybe they don't belong here, maybe he stopped loving them a long time ago. It's been a while since you've walked through these doors. You're still his child and he still loves you. He sent Jesus for you. He didn't send him more for me than for you. Help me call it. Sing this one, it's called Worthy.
He's always speaking to you. Always. Sometimes we let other voices be louder than his. Sometimes we let people or our jobs. 
or even silly things like entertainment be louder voices than our dear, dear Father's voice. And I'm not calling anyone out because this includes me. But he's always speaking to you. And really all he wants you to do is answer the phone. If your father called you on the phone right now, wouldn't you answer? Let's all just make sure that we're setting aside time to make sure we're answering that phone call. And that phone call is not in a rush. And it's not between all the other important things we have. It's not while we're multitasking. Let's give him our full attention. Father, we give you our full attention. Focus right now on Jesus.
Nothing is a sacrifice Oh, use me how you want to, God Have your throne within my heart I hear you we thank you in the name of your son Jesus for the grace you have given us to be in your presence father exalt yourself glorify yourself amongst us continue to show your face and shine your face upon us cleanse us of every unrighteousness purify us of every sin cause us to be pure before you that Lord we may carry out your will upon the earth Lord lead me lead your people on the path that is right that your name may be exalted lift the burdens off us tonight father help us to be everything that you want us to be by the power of your spirit in jesus mighty name somebody shout amen, amen. clap your hands and say amen, amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah 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 our god is good Amen. Our God is good. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. We celebrate you. We love you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord Jesus increase you. I want to wish my own spiritual father, Prophet Passion, Happy Father's Day also. He has been there for me in ways that only God knows and my family knows. So, Papa, I am grateful. I want to say Happy Father's Day to my uncles, to my close friends in ministry also. You know yourselves, if I start mentioning, it will not end. But yeah, Happy Father's Day to you all and to all sons of Revelation Church and Revelation Nation all around the world. 
Happy Father's Day to you. But I also want to say Happy Father's Day to a man who took me and placed me in his family and took me as his own, my very own Papa Brian, the most <laughs> handsome, powerful man I know. A special man that he is. He's, uh, he's still playing dad even now. <laughs> Making sure that I'm, I'm safe. If you cross that line, you get one. <laughs> but also, when I came to this country, there's a man that raised me, and I, I think he's one of the proudest fathers I know when he looks at me. When I came to this country, I didn't have anyone except him as a role model, as a father. And um, I remember him teaching me how uh, things in America and how they worked. I remember his first lesson to me was, in America, you never mess up your credit. <laughs> Everything in this country is credit. Hear me, I make these mistakes. You cannot make them. He gave me very good counsel when I was uh, working in the music business. He's the first one that introduced me to Pro Tools. And he trained me, and he taught me, and he taught me, and I took it, and I go crazy. Anyone who knows me, I have an um, obsessive personality in a good way, in a positive way. That when I get into something, I have to be the best at it, or else I'm never going to get into it. If I say I'm going to do this, trust me, I will do it until kingdom comes. So I did it so much I worked on what he showed me so much that he changed my name to plugins because I knew about every software, how it worked, every update, what went wrong. And uh, this is a man I love with all my heart because without him, the truth is I would not even be uh, where I am because it's because of his family that Revelation Church started in their living room. So you are here because of him. Amen. Uh, you can clap better. Amen. Amen. Happy Amen. Father's Day, Mze Onyango. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 He's a very low-key guy. He doesn't like a lot of attention, but I love you big time. And I know you know that. And I always see how when you look at me, you are extra proud. It gives me motivation. Happy Father's Day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. And I have one more shout out that is uh, very important to me. I want to wish Happy Father's Day to my father who created me, who made me, who ordained me a prophet before I came into this world. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lord Jesus, a Father like no other. When I am wrong, He corrects me. When I am lost, He finds me. He cleanses me. Pure. I thought He was your Father too. I celebrate Him that He cares for me so much that He placed His Spirit within me that I will continually know his mind, that he will never leave me nor forsake me. Amen. Happy Father's Day, Lord. Happy we love you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I felt that in my spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. I, I want you to know this, that men carry a very big burden. And yesterday I was with my grandfather. Oh, I forgot to wish him happy father. Happy Father's Day, Grandpa. <laughs> my bishop is... Uh, I love my bishop. Let me tell you, I've never... And this is the truth. Complete truth. I have never met anyone who knows the word of God more than this man. Ah, bishop is a different kind of man. And he truly, truly loves me beyond what I could imagine. Amen. He's given me advice and guidance. And sometimes he just, he would text me randomly, 2 a.m. in the morning. 
I'm like, Bishop, you should be asleep. You'll be, no, I'm thinking of you. I love you so much. So to my bishop, Bishop Noel Jones, I love you so much. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. And I had a wonderful day spending it with you yesterday. And I learned a lot like I always do when I'm with you. My greatness, which is just in its genesis, is because I am surrounded by great men. Amen. And I know how to be a son. Amen. Uh, the reason why many of our young people who have great destinies in God may never get to the realization of what God has for them is because you don't know how to be good sons. And to be a son doesn't mean somebody is older than you. Because my spiritual father, I'm actually a year older than him. But to be a son is to be somebody that can be instructed. To be a son means that you have an inheritance to receive. That's what sonship is all about. Is that God has placed somebody, somebody with something that you are supposed to inherit. And that person will instruct you, will lead you, will guide you. If they tell you go left, because you know their purpose is to help you to get to where God wants you to get to, you will turn left. Yeah. Sonship is not about somebody who agrees with you. A father is not your friend. He's your instructor. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Around, around my own spiritual father and other fathers, and there are many of them, I am like a small boy because I am. I may be successful in many things, maybe more than them, but the one percent they have is able to push me even farther. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? So when you are in a posture to receive, that is what sonship is. I can sit with Bishop, and Bishop may have taught me something a week ago, he will bring it up again. I will never act like he told me that before. I'll say, hmm, Bishop, tell me more. Then within that same conversation, he will add things I never heard and I never knew. And before you know it, I grew more than I was when I walked through that door. Amen. Just because the Holy Spirit is in you doesn't mean you have everything. If it was so, and if this was truth, then we would not need to have instructors in Christ. We would not need that. God said he gave us apostles, evangelists, uh, teachers, and pastors for the perfecting of the body until he's coming. Meaning all of us need to be perfected. God is still working on us because life is not just spiritual. And I've discovered that some of the most pivotal, pivotal things in your life are actually in the physical, not in the spiritual. There are experiences that you cannot substitute for a physical experience. I don't care how much you love God. When you have to love His people, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. You can say, I have the love of God all I want. Until you have loved his people, who some are almost unlovable. Thank God for grace. Amen. You will realize your need to go and sit under bishops and fathers to tell you like, listen, this is what church is like. This is what happened to me. So how did you navigate it? I did this and did this and did this. This is how your mind has to be. There are things God will not teach you. Only an earthly father or a father figure can teach you. My father died when I was eight years old. So my experience of father, of a father, was not somebody that I ran to. Daddy, daddy, I had. I never had that. I don't know how that looks like. I saw my cousins. I saw other people running to their fathers, jumping on them, but... We didn't have that. Is it not true, Masengo? That's true, very true. We didn't know that what that looks like. It's, it, we don't know it. Our, our, you know, we didn't have that. But we learned from fathers that God gave us. Like an example for me was Reverend Simon, my uncle. He was a father to me. 
he didn't birth me, but he was a father to me. Uh, Mr. Onyango, father to me. My spiritual father, father to me. Apostle Gershon, father to me. Bishop Donko, father to me. Papa Brian, father to me. I picked up, I realized that I have so many fathers. I, done, I did not just need one biological father. But God gave me so many other fathers. So if you're missing your dad today and you feel like your father is not there, understand this or he was never there for you or he rejected you, whatever the case may be. Understand this, that you are so special that God saw that you need more fathers. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, you didn't get it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You needed more than one. And ladies and daughters and sons, when you see your fathers hug them, we are expected to produce 24-7. Nobody checks on our feelings. No one checks on our emotions. Very rarely do people, and I'm not saying this so that you do that, very rarely people check on me and ask me, uh, they'll say, Prophet, how are you doing? I'm well. Uh, nobody ever really like, how are you doing? You, the person. I'm not talking about the prophet, you. Very rare. I'm not saying I need that, but it is good to have that. We are expected to produce 24-7. No one expects us to be weak. Everyone expects us to figure it all out, to have it sorted out. Yet we are just kids that grew also. <laughs> we are just uh, trying to overcome certain traumas and emotions but, and, and hard work. Because if our family fails, it is on us. If things go wrong, it is on us. It is difficult. Nobody just comes and, and hugs you and holds you and says, I want you to know that we see you, we love you. Today, find a father, find a brother, find somebody and hug them and tell them, I love you and I thank God for you. You are seen and we appreciate you. Even if you don't know them, it will go a long way. That little thing will boost. I thought you clap better. I'm... <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It goes a long way. Nobody expects that from us. We are expected to be Superman, and we are in some sense. But man, it's rough. You lay in the bed, you're thinking, what will be what, this, that, 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 because everyone is under your covering. It's not easy. But with God, all things are what? Possible. <laughs> Lift your right hand to heaven. Father, we pray for all the men in the house and fathers in the house. We thank you for the grace you have given to us to be able to walk and to stand. Lord, we pray that you will renew our strength and strengthen us, that we may be all that you need us to be and that we may be whom you want us to be for our families. Even the young men that are going to be fathers tomorrow, we pray for their strength, that, Lord, they will do better than us by overcoming things that some of us never knew that it was okay to cry, it was okay to find somebody to talk to. Father, teach them things we did not know and help them to become better than us. Give us the grace and the power to pray, to provide for our families and to look after them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Clap your hands and celebrate the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Remember this if you can. Father's Day is the least celebrated holiday on earth. Yeah, it's a real thing. So today, go buy some cards and something, give it to somebody. Hallelujah. 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 I think the person controlling the air conditioning is prophetic. <laughs> because it's nice and warm now. Let's grab our Bibles if we can. Glory be to God. Second Corinthians chapter 3. From verse number 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we all there? Yes. Are we all there? Are you sure? Yes. Are, are you freezing? Are you cold? Are you there? Yes. Uh huh. Wake up. <laughs> Let's read it together. One, two, three. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are and changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. One more time. One, two, three. But, but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Read it with everything that is in you. One, two, three. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Put your right hand on your head. Say, Father, give me the spirit of revelation. Father, give, give me the spirit of revelation. Give me wisdom and understanding. Give me wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may sit Hallelujah. in heavenly places. Now hear me by the spirit of God. Today I'm going to teach you a message called broken mirrors. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor, say broken mirrors. Broken mirrors. Shake your neighbor, say broken mirrors. Broken mirrors. Uh, find another neighbor behind you, high five them and tell them broken mirrors. Broken mirrors. Oh. Uh huh. I like those high fives. <laughs> now, hear me by the Spirit of the Living God, and I want you to understand this that in order for you to become what God needs you to be, you have to comprehend that if you don't understand spiritual things and the way of the spirit, you are in trouble. Not only do you need wisdom and understanding, but you need spiritual wisdom and understanding. You see, most of our problem is not prayer, but it is spiritual illiteracy. We are literate in scripture, but we are not literate in spirituality. We can understand physical things but we cannot comprehend spiritual things this is why you find that somebody will be talking about jesus telling you something to do with christ but somebody will still find a reason to say that is not true not because the bible doesn't say it but because their understanding in the spirit is little everything you say that they cannot comprehend or receive becomes false i don't know if somebody can hear me everything that you can manifest that is not normal becomes false not because what is being said is not true but many are spiritually illiterate they cannot understand spiritual things first uh, corinthians chapter 2 says this Spiritual things can only be discerned by the spiritual, not by scripture. Uh, you didn't hear what I said. Spiritual things can only be discerned by the spiritual, not because you have the Bible. You can have the Bible and be deceived. I, I think you didn't hear me. You can have the living word of God in your hands and super be deceived because you are not spiritually literate. This is how many of the occultic groups get people. You find that somebody who is in an occult like a mason, a Freemason carrying a King James Bible. I, I don't know if you can hear me. Yet this is an occultic practice, but they're carrying the word of God. And they'll tell you, no, we believe in the word of God. Everything in the word of God is true. But their worship is to somebody else. You're teaching, you're teaching. I thought I was speaking to somebody. So you have to understand that spiritual illiteracy is the issue. That is the problem, especially in the church right now. Jesus tells you, Satan cannot cast out Satan. Satan cannot cast out Satan. Demons will never fight each other. Because a kingdom divided amongst itself can never stand. But you see, 
prophet Lovi casting out demons. Foolish people say, ah, he's imparting demons. Who told you demons enter people like that? But all this is because when you're spiritually illiterate, anything that is operating beyond your understanding becomes false. But this is because of broken mirrors. I, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Amen. All this is because the mirror we are using is broken. Mm. You see, when the mirror you use, sometimes when I go to stores and I, I love to shop, as you can see. <laughs> when you go and shop, one of the primary things you have to do is look at your outfit. Now, there are mirrors that are distorted, not broken, but distorted. You stand there and you see yourself going like you look like you're zigzag. Or you look at yourself, you see yourself a little, like you gained a few pounds. And others, you look at yourself, you see yourself extra skinny. Come on, come on. <laughs> now, you have to understand that you don't see yourself. You only see what the mirror reflects of you. Come on. Come on. Come on. I, I feel like I'm speaking to myself. Right now, in your mind, you have an image of what you look like because you looked at a mirror. Come on. Before you left your house, you did your makeup, you checked yourself, you stood, pocketed your hands, looked at... You do a little step. You say, all right. Yeah. Then when you walk out of the house, the confidence you received from the mirror. Come on. I'm preaching Come on. to myself. Come on. Come on. The confidence you received from the mirror is what makes you walk. Yeah. Uh-huh. It will make you greet people differently. It will make you feel better about yourself because of the testimony of the mirror. Come on, you're so teaching. Maybe I'm speaking to Overflow or Revelation Nation online. So, so you have to capture this by the Spirit of God. So all you know about yourself is not because you can see yourself. Because there are times you can feel ugly. But when you look at the mirror, you're like, oh, I didn't know I looked this good. So you don't determine how you look by how you feel. Come on. You determine how you look by how you look at a mirror. Amen. And the mirror testifies. Amen. My God. Come on. My God. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm talking to... Maybe this is going over some people's heads. The only testimony of you is because of how you saw yourself. Yeah. When you go to shops to buy clothes, we are getting somewhere, I promise you. When you go and buy clothes, you will notice... They never use regular people to sell you clothes. Every model, and I knew, I know some of them, some of them I mentor them. They are just human beings that are like a, 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 an art piece. They have the perfect weight. They have the perfect figure. They just look exotic. Something about them just looks like they, they are an AI or, or a drawing or something. And then they will take mannequins, also make them in that likeness. Have you ever seen those memes, what I bought online and what I got? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Have you ever seen that? This is what the outfit looked online. And when you order it, you put, you're like, Jesus Christ, what kind of 
demonic attack is this? This is not how it looked. When I looked at the picture, when I looked at it, man, did it look different. What is this? They put a model. Somebody that looks a certain way. When you pass that window and you look, you are not seeing how good that person is because the idea is to sell you something. Yeah. You start to imagine yourself in that outfit. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. You're your teacher. Come on. When you look at them looking at, you're like, oh, I think, yeah, I think that's kind of like my. You go in the store, you realize you are ordering a few sizes bigger. You realize it's not quite you, but in your mind you are forcing it because you saw something that reflected a certain image that you're trying to fit into because that is the, the idea of perfection according to the time and the era that you are in. When I was growing up in Africa as a young boy, if you are skinny like me, you are poor. It doesn't matter what house you have. When people look at you, they will say, ah, your pockets are completely empty. For you to display that you are rich, When you have a big belly, no six pack, all the boys killing yourself doing crunches, you go to Africa, you'll be disappointed. You'll be extra disappointed. A man with a big old belly, you'll be the one that will call boss. You with your six pack and with your money, no one will even look at you. Because for them, that is the image of prosperity. Wow. Wow. I'm trying to bring you somewhere to a certain understanding. I hope you can get it. In countries like Uganda and other countries in Africa, certain tribes, when a young woman is about to get married, your aunties and your sisters and your mom take you to the village. They will keep you in a hut or a small house and you will not be allowed to work or do anything. They will feed you fatty foods. You drink milk four times a day. You eat cheese. You eat everything that will make you gain weight. Because the more curvy you are, the more meaty you are. When your husband now comes to do the wedding, he's saying, yes, I have some. I'm keeping it real. Amen. Come on. Good. I'm keeping it real with you. For them, that is what is like, mm, I have something to hold on to as if the other one you didn't. Now I mm, now this is beauty. Uh -huh. uh, tell them, Apostle. Especially in the posterior section. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You are laughing because it is true. Is it not true? Wave your hands. Truth. In 2023, the gym is not about being healthy. If you hear a young lady saying, I am going to the gym, they are not going to be in shape to be fit so that they live long. They only work two or three muscles. <laughs> That's true. The teacher the teacher the teacher, sir. <laughs> Only one place is being worked. All this.
this is because the beauty standard has what? Shifted. Good teaching. All this because they saw an image of a woman who was not blessed by it, but surgically got it. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. You see, I feel like I'm talking to myself. All this because they saw a reflection of somebody who was not born with it. Their mama didn't give them anything. They got it just by paying for it to each his own. It's, it's really no sin. It's up to you. But the issue is this. The beauty standard has become distorted because people are looking at the wrong mirror. Amen. So many young women have died. Listen to me. So many young women have died. Because they have put poison in their body. Because they believe by doing this, then I become beautiful. But in the pursuit of this, some have destroyed their health. Some have died. Because the mirror they are looking at is Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat. They are looking at the wrong mirror, not knowing... Some of us were born different than others. So I don't need to look at somebody else to see myself. I need to look at God to see my... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I I thought maybe I'm preaching to the overflow. Church is in overflow. I don't know if I'm preaching to everybody. But all this, hear me by the Spirit of God. All this is because of broken mirrors. Broken mirrors. A young man of God will see me dreadlocked, looking like this. They will say, ah, you know what? If I want to be successful in ministry, I need to look like this man. Let me have dreads. Let me, you know, then I will blink. Then when I come and I say, God bless you. You know, that's what a man of God looks like. Not knowing me, I am a musician. I came from a musical, but all my life I've been like this. Either I had long hair or braided hair or colored hair. This is me. I'm not pretending. My brother Sig is one of my oldest friends in the country. Stand up. This handsome looking man. Single. I met Sig working on music, and when I met Sig, Andrew was probably three, a month, maybe a month old, right? He was just, he just came, fresh, he was just born. So, I've known Sig for 14 years. 14 years. When he met me, I think, I had, did I have blonde hair at that time? Yeah. I had a mohawk and a... Yeah. This is me, I'm not pretending. No, it's not. Yeah. Did anything about me spiritually change? No. Been the same since. Ever since. But somebody who doesn't know my story will look at this image, look at this picture and say, mm, that's what a man of God looks like. Or that's what a man of God should not look like. All that is because they will take somebody like me, and I know Pastor Benny. Pastor Benny is one of the mentors to one of the fathers. They'll say, why can't he just wear nice suits, be shaved down, and just look like a decent man of God? His background and my background are not the same. I can't pretend. God didn't call me to be a pretender. God didn't call me to be an actor. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. I can't fit into somebody else's reflection. I can't walk under another man's shadow. I only walk under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I I feel like I'm preaching to myself. 
But I, I want you to see this. Let's go to the word of God quickly. 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 12. Hmm. For we now see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now in part, but then I shall be known even as I am known. When you are in the journey of life, you have to remember when God created man, God was looking for a mirror. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. God was looking for a mirror. Not because he cannot see himself. But because God wanted to see himself in a certain setting. He wanted that atmosphere to experience him. Because where he is, it is impossible for his creation to see him in full. So God created a mirror of himself and placed it in creation so that the angels, the beasts of the field, the fish and the birds, and other spiritual beings that God has created that we know and we don't know, can see God the way he is. So when you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, it says this. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Now God being omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, being who he is, being the God of all creation, it means whether you are black, yellow, green, slender, fat, short, tall, you are reflecting a side of God that has never been seen in creation. Amen. I feel like I'm speaking to myself. You are a display of God's virtues in a unique and specific and a peculiar way that no one else can ever do. Listen to me. There will be great men of God after me, but there will always be one of me. Amen. 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 I'm going to say it one more time. There will be other prophets after me, but I will tell you, there is only one prophet, Lovi Elias. Amen. There will never be another duplicate of me. It cannot happen. Why? Because I am uniquely made for a unique time, for a unique people. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So, so capture this by the Spirit of God. So the devil knows. He understands. Because angels were present when men were being created. If you want to watch about and know about angels, I did a whole teaching, uh, I think two or three days ago, maybe four days. Uh, it's called, uh, Who is Speaking to Me? Is it a familiar spirit or, a, or an angelic spirit? Because people who don't know scripture and they are spiritual elite, spiritually illiterate, they have never seen anyone prophesy with an angel speaking to them. Yet when they read their Bible, it is everywhere. Mary was given prophecy about the child in the belly, Gabriel. Daniel was told about the future, Gabriel. The name angel itself means messenger. That's what Malak means. Somebody that delivers messages. But because they are spiritually illiterate, they will say, well, what is the point of the Holy Spirit being in you? You don't even know the work of the Holy Spirit inside of you. Are you getting what I'm saying? But all this is because the mirror they are using is not the word of God. They are using tradition and religion 
culture of the church, not actually the word of God to determine who carries God and who doesn't. They are using what their pastor used to do. I, I have a word for you. I just feel the Lord saying in my heart. Nothing wrong with that. Then somebody comes and tells you, the angel of the Lord stood by me and he told me this and this. And God is saying this. They will say, hmm. Angels don't give you words. Yet, their whole book, this whole book, 98% of the prophecies in your Bible, angels gave it. Even the Ten Commandments that you keep, that the Bible tells you that the Ten Commandments were given by the finger of God. You don't even know what the finger of God is. If the Bible says we are the body of Christ, what would the finger of God mean? You go to the Gospels, you discover that the law that was given to you, ordained by angels, you didn't keep. When, when Moses was on the mountain, yes, he encountered God, but he encountered God through a being. The Bible says God sent his angel to burn in a tree. And when he saw Moses seeing the tree burning, not being consumed... Then God called unto Moses from the midst of the tree. If I stand here and I say, I the Lord will bless you. It is not me who is talking. I can't bless you. If I am a vessel, angels are also what? Vessels. Your whole book of revelation that people use to determine the future. Saying that you see rumors of war. Look at how people look at the lawlessness. Look at this. The whole time John was speaking to an angel. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him. And he gave it to his angel. And to John. You notice John seeing an angel saying, I am Alpha and Omega and the beginning and the end. And he bows to worship him and he stops and says, don't worship me. Worship God, I am your fellow servant. If indeed it was Jesus, he would never stop him from worshiping him. But you see, when you don't know scripture and you're spiritually illiterate, you will look at something that goes beyond you and call it demonic. Why? It is not their fault. It is the mirror they're looking at. When the Lord Jesus walked in his day, his battle was never the devil. It was the traditions of men that held the Jews from seeing him. Jesus would tell them this. He said, you keep the traditions of your fathers and honor them even beyond the word of God. You come to your house, you wash your cups, you wash your hands as you are commanded by tradition. But the word of God, you don't keep it to the same standard. Why? Because when you look at your fathers, it's a mirror of you. Bishop said something very wonderful to me yesterday when we were speaking on the panel. My bishop said this to me. He said, it is very difficult for people to learn like this. Looking to God and learning is difficult. It's easy for men to learn like this. That's why kids always say, or this is a saying I've heard, kids don't do what they are told. They do what they see. Because you can only imitate a mirror. You cannot be instructed by what you cannot see. I feel Amen. like I'm talking to Amen. I feel like I'm talking to myself. So, so understand this by the Spirit of God. Understand this by the Spirit of God. The battle is always a battle of whose mirror are you looking at. It is not a battle of, of, of anything other than whose mirror are you looking at. The deception, the deception that Adam and Eve fell into had to do with a mirror. Eve is told, God doesn't want you to eat of this tree because the day you eat of it, 
you will become like him. Not knowing, if not knowing, I am already created in the image and the likeness of God. The devil knew this because they were present. If you read the book of Job, it tells you that they were present when man was created. How they shouted for joy when everything was being put together. But Eve was not conscious. Eve was not present. Adam was not present. Saying, the only way I can destroy these people is by making them look at the wrong mirror. You look at Genesis chapter 3. The Bible tells you, Genesis chapter 2, it tells you, and the man and the woman were naked and they had no shame. So notice, you cannot talk about shame unless shame exists. I am trying to make you use your brain to think. The reason why God told them, on the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die because there was somebody that was already in death. Satan had already been kicked out of glory. Hell was already designed for him and his demons. There was a lake of fire already waiting for him. Teaching. God created man for creation to see a mirror of who God truly is. Because remember, when the devil sinned, he never saw mercy. Mm. He never saw compassion. Mm. God kicked him out. So if the mirror we know, which is what a lot of religious people want to go by, is that mirror, then we will... See God as a God who doesn't forgive, mm -hmm. a God who is not merciful, yeah. a God who does not have loving kindness, uh -huh. because Satan never received any of those things. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. If that is the picture of God creation had, then God is a bad God. But why did the devil get kicked out and never received mercy? Is because he had no tempter, but he deliberately chose. So good, this is good. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Delib deliberately chose to turn against God and to pursue his own way. Instead of the way that he was created for. Yeah. Satan never needed to discover what his purpose was. He already knew what his purpose was. Okay. So to live a purposeful life in the presence of God was already there. But he chose away from God. Yet the mysteries of God were before him. One day I will teach you about the fall of Satan. I promise you what I will tell you. Many of you, probably 99% of you did not know. You will understand why he was told. You who walked amongst the stones of fire. It is much deeper than what you think. He was cut down. Because he got to the high heavens. He was demoted. He did not listen. He continued in his ways until he was kicked out of heaven. Satan knowing that now, you have to remember for him to sin. Because if you are called a sinner, then there is a law. Because if there is no law, by what standard are you judging sin? So even in heaven, there is a law that governs angels. I went too deep. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm talking to Revelation Nation. Maybe let me see my overflow people that are always on fire. I, 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 I feel like I felt like I'm by myself here. So there are certain mysteries that we will talk about that will shock you. 
that will 100% shock you because you cannot be a sinner. You cannot be wrong unless there is a standard to judge what is right. So Satan having distorted his own mirror, the Bible says that you looked at your beauty. He forgot that the beauty of his radiance was because his eyes was on God. Come on. Come on. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Yeah. He forgot what made him beautiful. He forgot what adorned him. And pride entered him. And he lost his place. So now him knowing this, he's observing Adam and Eve because he doesn't know what is in their mind. But Satan can observe you to know you. Mm. Only God knows the secrets of the heart. Amen. Nobody else. Amen. Listen to me. I'm telling you this by the Spirit of God because it is the truth of the word. The Bible says that God examines not only the heart, but even the intent of it. Satan does not know anyone's heart, does not even know the intent. All he can do is by looking at what you like, what you give attention to. It's called cold reading. He can tell your intentions by enticing you, tempting you, dangling certain things before you by having a database of observing human beings for a certain period. That's good. He can tell what human beings usually will fall for. That is why when he came to Jesus, he tempted him with every other thing that every other human being struggles with. He tempted him with food. Jacob's brother Esau sold his destiny, his birthright because of his stomach. How many of you at some point compromised your values in God because you just needed to get the bag? Come on. You needed to get money. Come on. So you compromised what you believe. I'm talking Come to, on. I want to talk to real people. So Satan knows when you're hungry, yes. you give into anything. When you're struggling, you will look for the easy way out. Yeah. He knows this because he has looked at human beings and he has discovered this is their nature. Yeah. They don't know the value of pain. They look for a way out wow. of pain. Remember, anyone who knows pain knows the cost. Yeah. Amen. Anyone who knows pain knows the cost. Mm. Yesterday I taught a message. Uh, um, I taught a message called "Enmity," the snake, the woman, and her seed. Amen. If you are a woman, you are a man. You need to watch that. It will change your whole life. Anyone who knows pain knows the cost. Satan went after Eve because Eve knew the cost, because she was the only one that will feel pain when she births. That is why God said, I will exceedingly increase your pain. He did not say, I will give you pain. Because pain already existed. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Look. I feel like I'm talking to... Are, are, are you hearing me by the Spirit of God? Yes. So, so capture this by the Spirit of God. Capture this. Satan knew. These guys, I need them to not look at the mirror that is God. I need to show them who they are and let them use their own mirror to look at themselves and not God. So when Adam and Eve are created, they look at each other and notice. And they were both naked, meaning they knew what nakedness was. The man and his wife and were not ashamed. Meaning they looked at each other. They saw imperfection. Remember, there is no scripture that says Adam and Eve were holy. There was no law 
so there was no sin for them. So good. Teaching. You didn't hear what I said. There was no law, so there was no sin for them. Meaning there were things, remember they were growing, they were children in adult bodies being given an assignment. They were not, they didn't have supernatural intelligence. They were graced with power because it was normal for them. But they were not super, they had no life experience. So there were things that they would get wrong. But because there is no law, there is no sin. Remember what the Bible says. It says the law was given not for you to keep, but for you to know what sin is. Adam and Eve did not know sin. There was no standard. So they looked at each other. And remember, the moment I tell you, don't do this. That is already a law I'm giving you and a standard. If you do this, there are consequences. If they were all knowing, they should have known that tree, we should not touch it. God didn't have to tell them. God even told them, you see, every tree in this garden is for you for food, including the tree of life. But they had no need for the tree of life because they were already alive. They were not created for death, so they had no need for the tree of life. Yeah, good. The tree of life has value if there is death. <laughs> Teaching good. Woo! But because they were still growing, they thought to grow they needed knowledge. But in order for you to grow in God, you need wisdom. Amen. Amen. God Amen. never gives you knowledge. God gives you wisdom and understanding. Yeah. And by the wisdom and understanding, you discover knowledge and how it should be used. Amen. If you just have knowledge, it becomes destructive because you don't know the purpose of it. Now the conscious has been unlocked to something that you cannot control. Control. You become a slave to it. When Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, they looked at each other. The first time they looked at each other, they didn't see each other. They saw the God that made them. So there was no shame in God. I may have no money today, but I am not ashamed because I am in God. I may not have the best clothes today, but I'm not ashamed because Jesus is my everything. Yeah, I may not have the best car. I may not have the best situation. I may not have the best. Come on. But because I have Jesus, yeah. I am comfortable because I know he is not done with me. Amen. Where I am today is not a reflection of where I am going. Come on. Amen. So I am not ashamed. Even if I have no clothes, yeah. even if I have nothing, yeah. I will thank God because I see the mirror yeah. that is Jesus and I know my... Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know and understand my destiny is to be conformed to that image. So Adam and Eve look at each other, there is no shame. The moment they eat the fruit, remember... There was no law for them. There was no standard for them. All of a sudden, they became ashamed. What, why did they become ashamed? They became judgmental. Wow, you're teaching. I need to cover myself. I need to cover this. Not even they did not cover themselves because of God. They covered themselves because of one another. Oh. I'm, the teaching. I, I feel like overflow. Let me talk to you. I think the people in here don't get it. Church. Let me talk to you. Church. Revelation Church. Nation, let me talk to you. They, they covered themselves from each other. Because now the standard was whatever they determined among themselves. Wow. It was no longer the standard that God has set. Come on. It's too good. 
This is why you feel condemnation when you mess up. Come on. Because your standard is men and Come not on. God. Come on. Who says, for those who are in Christ, yes. there is no more condemnation. Yes. Because you are a work in progress. Yes. And because you are a work in progress, you can miss it, you can mess up. Yes. It is okay as long as you are a work in progress. Amen. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Hear you. I sit for two seconds. Actually, I have three minutes. And 22, 21, 20 seconds. I, I, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So they started covering themselves. And then when God came, they went to cover themselves even more behind bushes. Mm -hmm. They went to hide behind bushes when they heard God looking for them in the garden. The reason why many of you cannot grow in God is because you are still sowing figs. Come on. Come on. You are trying, you're trying to dress up before you come to God. Come on. <laughs> Many of you are trying to cover yourself. You're trying to dress yourself before you show up before God. In order for God to heal you, you have to repent. Who did Jesus ask to repent when he was healing them? After he healed them, he showed them his love and compassion. Then he said, go and sin no more. Because if you need to clean yourself up, then what is the blood of Jesus doing? So good. This is why many of you plead something that is already working for you. Amen. Because you are still looking for a way to justify why you should stand before God. Yet when God formed you, you are naked. When you came out of your mother's womb, you are naked. When you were growing up, in fact, you didn't want to wear clothes. You just wanted to run around. They have to chase you. Put on some diaper. You had no problem playing naked because you are a child. You are innocent. But you being a child of God, God says, come to me. You say, Lord, let me put on my diaper properly first. Let me dress myself in my onesie. Let me cover myself so that when I stand before you, If you came to God, you see, the duty of you changing is not with you. You can't change yourself. I can't change myself. No one can change themselves. It's only God who has the power to change because he's the one who created. An iPhone cannot change itself to iPhone 15, 16. It cannot even update itself. The creators have to send an update to update it. You can't change yourself. Only God can change you. No one has the power to do so. So, so many of us have quenched the spirit of God, the power of God. The reason why spiritual illiteracy is continuing is because a bunch of people that are naked have covered themselves to present themselves a certain way before God. And because God is gracious, you see, I, 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 I was, somebody asked me a question. Somebody asked me a question. And uh, you have to understand that I'm sorry to say this, and I'm going to say this with love. I'm not saying this with a bad motive. Nothing I will ever say is with the wrong motive. We are here to serve the Lord. But I'm going to tell you this. America and Europe, let's say, you know, the, the mainstream stuff. But let me speak specifically about America. 
America loves God, but America is not a spiritual nation. That's the absolute truth. That is why you're finding that people who are young in Christ, they got saved maybe two or three years, four years, five years, can get online and rebuke elders who are walking with God, who have done things for God. Even just by ranking, you don't qualify to speak. Not saying that the young cannot correct, but there is a manner in which you ought to do it. There is an honor that will come because you understand spiritual things. Somebody sent me a video yesterday, and people send me videos all the time. Somebody sent me a video of somebody casting out a demon out of somebody. And uh, the title of the video was sent to me, some uh, uh, um, deliverance from a spirit of divination that entered somebody through Prophet Lovi. That was the title. No, it's okay. I am teaching you. Not to, uh, Listen, I don't need to defend myself. I'm teaching you to show you how unspiritual and spiritually immature the church is, especially on this side. So... The person is talking to the, oh, repent. I repent from uh, Prophet Lovi's teaching. I repent from this. I repent. That's fine. It's not a big, I repent from this. It says, you spirit that came in through uh, Lovi uh, and his teaching, come out. And the person said, eh. first of all, if, <laughs> first of all, let me just show you the hypocrisy and the foolishness. Let me show you the hypocrisy and the foolishness of these immature people. Let me just show you, because you need to know these things. If you're ignorant of it, some of you may ask questions, well, why is this happening? I will explain to you. Because I'm a, listen, I am a prophet by birth. I didn't adapt a title, not because I started casting out demons, then I called myself a prophet. No. I know this thing. So, so hear me by the Spirit of God. Hear me by the Spirit of God. Number one, anyone who listens to me and thinks... Let me give you a general example. Demons can enter people in different ways. But you have to understand, demons operate in people because of a legal right. No one can lay hand on you and give you a demon. Demons will come into you. Remember, the deep calleth unto the deep. You can never, somebody cannot just give you a demon. Anyone who says that is spiritually illiterate. It doesn't work like that. Demons enter you because of a legal right, either by blood from your ancestors or by your own conceding to things, but not because somebody was teaching, let's say, the worst teacher in the world. Let's assume I'm the worst heretic in the world. The least I can do is damage your way of thinking, but I can never give you a demon by what I'm saying. If there is no legal right, I can distort your knowledge. But to give you a demon, that's actually impossible. How many of you hear people cursing like sailors? Everywhere you go, F-bomb this, F-bomb that, F-bomb. Did a demon hear you enter you because you heard F-bombs? You watch movies all the time. People cursing and doing this. Did a demon enter you? Some of you even like gossip, which is a dangerous thing, poison. You heard people talking about this one and about that one. Did a demon enter you because you are in the wrong conversations? No. Are, are you hearing me? So the person is saying, you demon, who are you? What is your name? The woman says, ah. Say, what's your name? Say who you are. The woman says, ah, ah he's saying, I am tricky, tricky. <laughs> 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 I'm like... <laughs> This was comedy to me. And then he says, I know who you are, spirit of divination. Okay, fine. Tell me what divination did that woman do? The woman with the spirit of divination in the book of Acts, she could do spiritual things. What divination was this woman doing? 
You see, we talk because of foolishness. Nonsense. It says, come out. Oh, the woman started throwing up. We thank God that God delivered her. But let me explain to you. Why was she delivered? God is merciful because if God chooses to use you, he doesn't use you because you know. God uses you because of his grace. When God has loved you and he has chosen to use you, he doesn't use you because you're perfect. He uses you because he has chosen to do so. There are things you thought were right five years ago and God was using you. Five years later, you realize that they were in error. But he never stopped God from using you. Why? Because when God has graced you and somebody is indeed afflicted, if you say in the name of Jesus, God will still deliver them, not because you're right, but because he's merciful and he's a God of grace. Amen. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because we are products of grace, not because you're right. For we do not wrestle against, let me, let me show you this. Let me finish with this because this has to do with the mirror. I just thought of it because it's hilarious. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 45. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Many of you say, ah, yeah, ah, ah, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Show me one verse one apostle ever said plead the blood. God is still using it because God's no, God knows the intent of the heart is to bring somebody to redemption. Even though your words may not be accurate, but they are coming from the right place. So God will still intervene. You can't plead what was for God. The blood of Jesus was shed for us to be reconciled to God. The blood of Jesus is on the mercy seat in the highest heaven. Already speaking good things, better things, then any other blood can speak. But when people read Revelations 5, I believe, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They assume that it means plead it. They are not reading context. They overcame. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Why did we overcome by the blood of the Lamb? Satan used the law against us. Because we were enemies of God, he would fan the flames of accusations against us because we were not redeemed. Remember, the only one who has the power to punish is God. So he weaponized the law against us and God being a just God, he has to punish sin. Are you understanding what I'm telling you here? So, so capture this by the spirit of God. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Notice, anyone who is using carnal means to fight demons, you know they are a spiritual baby. Amen. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So if I take apostle and I start saying, you demon of apostle that entered that, I am already fighting the wrong battle. Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I am not fighting him. Amen. If there is a demon behind him, then I will deal with that devil. I will not deal with him. Yes. Is Satan our enemy or is it flesh and blood? It's Satan. But when you are a baby in the spirit, you are a child in the spirit, you think you know. But it is the grace of God carrying you. But here's the thing, there are always consequences when you play with certain things to a certain extent. You will touch fire. Watch this. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. What are they? Mighty through God. So if I'm fighting a carnal battle, I have left God. Because if it is mighty through God, God is spirit, then I will be dealing with spirits. I will not be dealing with a brother or a sister or an uncle. And the crazy thing is some of us are actually prophets. If we want to pull X-Files. But watch this. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Notice there is no full stop because it's a continuation. Verse 5. 
casting down imaginations, the wrong mirror. That's good. I thought I was speaking to myself. The first thing you pull down by the Spirit of God is the wrong imagination. Because that is a reflection. If you go to Proverbs, I believe it's Proverbs what? I wrote it down somewhere. I believe it's Proverbs 27 verse 19. Uh, I could go to Proverbs 27 19 quickly and then we'll come back. No, I think that's the wrong one. Oh yeah, you know, it is the right one. Go back, go back. Iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. You make your friend better. 18, keep going. Then look at this. Uh, no, I think you got it. It was face to face. Go back to that one. It was 19? Yeah, go to. Yes. As 19, 19. Uh -huh. As in water, face answereth to face. So the heart of a man to a man. And when he's saying water there, he's saying the reflection. He's talking about your reflection. When you see people fighting other people, just know that is the image they see of themselves. So good, so good. Teaching. They are distort, they are distorted their own backgrounds. You see, I discovered this. People who like to fight is because they were fighting all along in their life. Yeah. So everyone that comes, they want to fight. This is childhood trauma. Yeah. Good, Some people need therapies, not deliverance. Because they are manifesting their childhood traumas. So everyone is like an enemy. This one is this, this, fighting everyone. Why? Not demons. Everyone. Why? They are dealing with their childhood problems. Maybe they didn't have father's love, brother's love. Maybe they were the least, whatever the case may be. Take me back to where we were. Casting down imagination. The wrong reflection. Mm, I'm about to finish. Go back, go back to Corinthians, please. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, this is the problem. Not only imaginations, because if your mirror is distorted, then it is easy for you also not to see God as he is. And every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. This is not talking about the mysteries of God. It is talking about the person of God himself. If I am looking at the wrong mirror, when I look at God, I will also see God in a bad light. If God tells you, I will bless you. I will increase you. I will make you great. You will compare God to your father who may have not been there for you, who was not faithful to you, who did not protect you, who rejected you when you were a child, and you will doubt God because the knowledge of a father you have has distorted the image of God because of the imagination of who a father ought to be. So good. I don't know if you can hear me. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So not only are you dealing with a broken mirror, the broken mirror has also made you see God the wrong way. But not only did all this damage you, but it made it worse. The thoughts that are in you are no longer in light of God. They are thoughts that are being projected to you by evil spirits. They are not in alignment to the obedience of Christ. 
Notice the two points. The first one is dealing with your spiritual reflection. The second is dealing with your physical uh, reflection. The third one is dealing with the condition of your soul. Have you ever met people who just think everyone is an enemy? Or why did you look at me like that? So you're planning this against me. No one is planning anything against you. What's going on? Or I know that look. Well, you're not going to get me. Wait, what? How did we get here? I know what you people are trying to do. Who's trying to do what? Or you're giving me this so that you can have something on me. Yeah, I see you. No. It's just like, wait, what is going on? You know the thoughts in them have been afflicted. Let me tell you the biggest danger of demons in a person. When a demon enters a person, his primary objective is to destroy this. Your imagination, the knowledge of God, and the thoughts in you. So that you can walk in disobedience. Because Satan lost his place because of disobedience. Because disobedience is like witchcraft. Are you listening to me? So even when a demon comes out of pers a person, that is actually not deliverance. It is the beginning of deliverance. If you don't get the word of God inside of you, you do not know the truth. And because you do not know the truth, you are still bound. Amen. For you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. So without the truth, a demon may have left. But what they did to you, you would bind yourself. So good. You would have done the devil's job. Mm. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Are you sure you can hear me? Yes. Wave your hands if you can hear me. So, 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 hear me, hear me as I'm finishing. Your mirror and my mirror, as we wait for the musicians to come up. <laughs> You're looking at the wrong mirror. It's their fault, not mine. If you are in Christ, let's look at this quickly. Let's finish. James chapter 1 verse 23. James chapter 1 verse 23. Listen to this. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass or a mirror. Verse 24. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. <laughs> Hear me. This is your mirror. When you see yourself looking broke, you look at this mirror. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking to the wrong people. <laughs> when you see yourself sick, you hold this mirror. Yes. By his stripes, yes. I am healed. Yes. So you look at the book, you see Jesus. And when you see Jesus, that's what you really look like. Amen. For those he foreknew, yes. he also predestinated to be conformed to the image. Yes. Meaning every time you look at yourself and you don't see Jesus, pick up the word of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pick up the word of God and use the work of the word of God as your makeup kit. Yes. Boy. Yes. Use the word of God not just like a mirror, but as your makeup kit. If you're sick, take the word of God as medicine. Put it where your body is broken. Hallelujah. And you will see yourself as you... Come yeah. on. Hallelujah. When you are struggling, 
you pick up that word you are above and not below yeah. by looking at that your imagination is transformed yes you begin to see yourself successful yes. Yes. as the bible says you shall own vineyards yes. Yes. you shall own homes yes. you realize i am actually not poor when i look at myself i am looking at the wrong reflection the difference between a physical mirror and the mirror of God is that when you look at God, you are changed. But when you look at yourself, you are bound. Because man cannot change you. Only God carries the power and the grace and the ability and the mercy to change yeah. Amen. 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 How many of you actually take the mirror that is the word of God and look at yourself? Some of you, the devil has discouraged you to look at the mirror because he knows the day you look at the mirror, he will know that you know that you have power over him. In your own capacity, you look at yourself. You think demons have the power to destroy you. But when you look at the mirror, you see that you shall trample over yes. Amen. scorpions and serpents. And they shall not harm you. But because you don't look at the mirror, you have the wrong picture. You have the wrong image. You don't even know who you are. You don't know who you are. Peter walked on water because he looked at a mirror. Jesus was on one side. He said, Lord, if it is really you, bid me to come. Jesus didn't do a prayer ceremony. Hold on, let me release the anointing. Jesus said, then come. As he looked at Jesus, he was walking over the waves. Yes. He was walking over the waters. Amen. Waves had no power over him. Yeah. But the moment his eyes left the mirror, he started seeing the power of the waves and he began to drown. drown. Jesus held him by his eyes. He said, Lord, save me. Many of you are crying, God, save me. God is saying, you don't need saving. Look at the mirror. Amen. If you look at the mirror, you will realize you are your own salvation. Amen. That is why the Bible says, work out your own salvation. When you have Jesus living in you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Meaning it is an error. To be crying for God to rescue you, yet he is living inside of you, waiting to be released by you. Yes. Because through him you can do all things. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who is... But you are busy saying, God, save me. All this is because of the wrong mirror. The children of Israel look at, looked at themselves for 400 years looking at the wrong mirror when they were in Egypt. They were crying to be free, saying, Lord, how long, how long, how long? When Moses was sent to them and Moses brought them out of Egypt, there was no one whipping them. They didn't have to work for anybody. They didn't have to be under bondage and affliction. They didn't have to be in any of these things. When the going got hard, they wished they were back in Egypt. They began to praise the graves that were in Egypt. 
Yet they were not even allowed to be buried where the Egyptians were buried. They were not allowed to live where the Egyptians lived. They were not even allowed to marry the Egyptians. They were completely segregated. They were removed from society. You are a slave nation. They began to say, Moses, did you bring us here to die? Were there no better graves in Egypt? Meaning they never saw themselves leave Egypt. Their bodies left Egypt. But their mirror, their mirror is still looking at Egyptians. It's still looking at the life in Egypt. It is more difficult to free a free slave. Mental captivity is worse than physical captivity. If you are mentally captive, you can escape with your mind. But when you are bound mentally, it doesn't matter where your body goes. You are still bound. Because remember, man looks with their eyes but sees with their heart. So if your soul is bound corrupted by false and true lies of the enemy it is actually more difficult to deal with because you cannot rebuke lies you cannot go on a prayer line for somebody to say lies come out no You cannot pour anointing oil to deliver somebody from lies. One of the fathers of Africa, Nelson Mandela, said it. You cannot be delivered from lies by prayer. The only way you come out of lies is to know the truth. Amen. 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 I won't keep you long because of Father's Day. I want you to go and celebrate with your families. But I want you to hear this and hear this by the Spirit of God. Eat from the king's table. Look at yourself through the mirror of the king. Amen. Let it be what feeds you. Not the opinions of men. Amen. Not the ideas of men. Not the capacity of other men. But the truth that proceeds from the mouth of God himself. A man can be in error. I can be in error. But if you have the truth, you will even have grace for those who are in error. You will understand that, ah, they just need navigation. They need to be pointed this way. Our liberation, our true liberation is not in too much praying. Even though prayer is good, without the word the insight of God. What are you praying about? What are you praying about? Mental bondage is a result of a broken and distorted mirror. When you have the right mirror, you look at yourself, you will see the love of God. When you have the right mirror, you look at yourself. You will see the grace of God that took you from where you used to be and has brought you to where you are. Amen. If you have the right mirror, you will look at your life and see the protection of God. You will see the provision 
of God. You will see the guidance and the leading of God even when you missed it. You will understand that indeed Jehovah is my God. He who watches over Israel surely does not sleep or slumber. He has been watching me all my life. And where I am is because of him. I want you to stand up. I want you to raise your hands to God Almighty. I want you to raise your hands to him. And you are going to speak to the Lord. And you are going to tell the Lord. Let every imagination that has been ruling my life, the voices that have been speaking to me, that have put me in a place of confusion, the arguments within myself, saying I am no good, I will never succeed, my time has passed, Let those thoughts today come to the obedience of Christ. Because I know you did not give me life for me to die in the wilderness. You ordained me for the promised land. You ordained me for the promised land. Lord, I pray. Let the lies of the enemy today, because of the word of God that is in me, through the words I've been hearing over the years, let your spirit bring it to my remembrance, that my heart will shift towards you. Lift your voice and begin to pray. 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 Rima magete kore na sande baganda vaze. Lima gunde mande i jorosho. Rufa na baganda vaze. Lima zoma mande i jorosho. Rufa na baganda vaze. Every Father, I Speaks Let's 
of God, hear me by the Spirit of God. Try your best. Hear me. Try your best to reconcile. To reconcile with brothers and sisters, mothers and uncles. Even though they have not been good to you, Lift the burden of hate and unforgiveness from you. No one is worth making you carry a burden that Jesus took. Don't allow somebody to have control over you to that magnitude. Some fathers were not good. Some husbands were not good. Some children were not good. Yes. Some sisters, some mothers. Yes. Everyone deserves forgiveness. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Carrying grudges is the most nonsensical thing to ever do. I don't even know if that's a word. It just felt right. I'll use my little sister Mary's word. It is actually repugnant. <laughs> it is terrible to carry unforgiveness. I was talking to Eva a few days ago and we were sitting in my studio and we were speaking and I told her, you know, when you have gone through people transitioning you realize the things you argued and you fought about don't even make sense I told her when me and Christian were much younger we argued a lot yes. argued a whole lot but that's normal with every sibling you go back and forth but I said I rather have him arguing with me disagreeing with me with the knowledge I have now, I will still hug him and kiss him. Jesus. Because I rather have you around yes. than for you to transition and then regret. Are you hearing me? It is totally not worth it. It is not worth it. God has called us to love people. We don't love them because they are lovable. Love is actually love when you can love people who are unlovable. That is the evidence of love itself. For God so loved the world. The world turned against God. Hated God. But because God is love, he still paid the price to restore us unto himself. Even if they don't respond, you will cut the power of the devil over you by just saying, you know what? Hey, whoever it is, I love you. And I'm sorry. Not if I did anything. I'm sorry for every wrong I've ever done. I want you to know I love you. You don't have to respond, but I want you to know I would be glad if you do. And you leave it like that. If they call and they want to talk about it, you tell them, there's no need to talk about that. I just want you to know I love you. The past is the past. We can't do anything with it. I just want you to know I love you. That's it. The moment you learn to cut and silence the devil, 
he will never have a response. As long as you have something to say, Satan will have a rebuttal. The moment you end it, it ends because if you don't say anything, Satan has nothing to say. Amen. Amen. Did you hear me? Father, we pray for all families and all that they represent. Their children, their brothers, their sisters, all the ones that they love. Lord Jesus, you know them even more than they know themselves. Father, I pray that healing, deliverance, and restoration will be their portion. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray those doors that they have been waiting to be opened. Let them be opened in the mighty name of Jesus. Let that blessing they have been waiting for. Let it be activated in their lives in the name of Jesus. I cancel every medical report. Every medical report that is pointing them to death and not to life, I decree and declare, you shall live and not die. From today, the hand of God is upon you. The increase of God is upon you. You will never fail. You will go from glory to glory to glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout glory. Glory. Clap your hands to the king. Again, happy Father's Day to you all. Happy Father's Day to you, You. prophet. Happy Father's Day to you. We love you, prophet. It is uh, an honor for me to be able to mentor, pastor, shepherd all of you. It is the greatest privilege anyone could be given. I don't even know why God chose me to do so, but I am glad that he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to give to God. I want you to go and enjoy your fathers, your brothers. I want you to go and enjoy them and eat together and enjoy. But I want to thank all the partners of the ministry, all those who are standing with us. May God bless you. May God increase you and may God multiply you. Raise what you want to give to God. Father, I bless their giving. Increase them, multiply them. May they know the blessing that proceeds from you even now. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it be so and let it be established. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands to the Lord. Clap your hands to Jesus. Clap your hands to Jesus. I will see you Thursday for a powerful prophetic service. Happy Father's Day. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Now we have a, 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 a photo booth set up for the fathers. You could take pictures with your family, with your children. Amen. And we also have a gift for all the fathers. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Praise God. Are we ready to dance as we come to give to the Lord? Amen. 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 Happy Father's Day.
Lord, we thank you for such a wonderful time as this. Thank you, Lord, for all of them that have joined us on every platform. We wish them a happy Father's Day. God bless you. Go from this place knowing that you are blessed and you are more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you on Thursday. God richly bless you.